Ah, so I'm Wenger. I'm going to talk about Hawk, which is an extension of the Elixir language for programming GPUs. So nowadays GPUs are everywhere, but they are very difficult to program. Uh, it's very low level programming. And one thing that I, I, I think it, it, it's difficult is that code code for, for programming GPUs mixes coordination and computation. So coordination is how tasks are created and distributed. And it mixes this code together with the code that does the real computation. So uh, what I'm going to present is Hawk, which is an extension of Elixir for GPU programming. Uh, Hawk means higher order GPU kernels. So the idea is that Hawk allows uh, device functions and also uh, to be referenced in host code, and also these functions can configure kernels at lunch time. Uh, lunch time. Also, we all allow the creation of anonymous device functions that can configure kernels before launching. So the contributions of these, this work are, uh, is the design and implementation of Hawk. Uh, also, we demonstrate that Hawk can be used to implement high-level high abstractions for GPU programming, like algorithm skeletons and uh, uh, array com comprehensions. And we also present some experiments with Hawk. Um, so Elixir is a dynamic functional language uh, designed for concurrent and distributed computing. It is based on the actors model. So in the actors model, we have processes with no shared memory that communicate only through a synchronous message passing. And uh, Elixir runs in, on the Erlang virtual machine that provides scalability distributed and fault tolerance. Um, so, I mean, the background, I'm going to talk about uh, GPU programming, which is mainly done in C, using CUDA or OpenCL, which are uh, low-level languages. There are also some high-level extensions for GPU programming in C, like OpenACC, HiCUDA, SPAR. And for other languages, we program GPUs uh, usually using libraries. In, in other languages, they usually use just-in-time compilations and DSL. So in the majority of the languages, kernel is the main abstraction, which is a function that is executed by many different th threads that run on the GPU. And threads are hierarchically organized in blocks and grids. So usually thread, a thread will compute a unique identifier that it will use to as, uh, access certain part, parts of a hate arrays. And uh, GPUs have a separate memory. So usually the, the workflow for programming GPUs, you have to load the data on the CPU, and then you copy the data to the GPU. Then you do the kernel lab, kernel and grid launch, and then after finishing the computing, you have to move back results uh, to the CPU. Uh, so now I'm going to talk about our, our work uh, in Hawk. Uh, Hawk is this extension to, to, to implement uh, GPU programs in the Elixir. And in Hawk, uh, kernels are written using the G-Potion DSL. Uh, that I'm going to talk about, uh, about it now. Uh, we use also to program GPUs the ma matrix library, which is a, a, a library for numerical ar arrays and matrices. It provides fast operations uh, with arrays and is implemented in C. So our first abstraction is the G matrix, which is a matrix that resides in the GPU memory. So we can create a, a normal CPU matrix, and then we use new G matrix to move this matrix to the GPU. 
and after computing with the G matrix, we can get it back using, uh, 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 well, you can create the G matrix either by using a matrix or by providing a size for it. And uh, after computing with the G matrix, you can move it back to the CPU using get G matrix. Uh, so the G matrix is no use inside of the Elixir, it can only be man manipulated by kernels and kernels are implemented in, in our extension of the Elixir. It's a new type of module in Elixir that is defined by the, the hoc def module primitive. Um, uh, a hoc module is basically the same as an elixir module. The difference is that you can also define kernels and uh, device functions inside of a hot module. So this is the, the example of a kernel. We define a kernel using def k. So this is a, a simple uh, sum of vectors. Uh, here we can see some differences between hoc, be, between jpotion and hoc from elixir. The first thing is that we can access CUDA constants inside of a kernel. And also we allow in place update. And as we have in place update, we also have uh, loops like for loops. So it's basically different than Elixir. Uh, so uh, the, the G portion it, it is uh, similar, as I said before, it is similar to Elixir, but it extends with CUDA runtime constants and in-place updates. But in-place update can only happen inside of kernels. Eh? And uh, as a, a, a kernel, this doesn't break the abstraction of the language because a kernel can be seen as a, an isolated process in Elixir that does not co communicate. Um, also, the G matrix can only be accessed by kernels. So once a kernel is uh, running, you cannot use a G matrix in the regular Elixir code. Uh, so basically, it's very separated from the normal Elixir code. And well, we also provide loops, and kernels are semantically equivalent to CUDA kernels because they are compiled in, into CUDA kernels. And a kernel can be executed by using a, 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 a special spawn. So this, this is a, an example of a, a complete program. We, uh, here we create two CPU matrices and then we send them to the GPU using this create G matrix. We have two, two matrix that we're going to sum using this sum vectors kernel. And also we have another uh, G matrix for the result. Here we are loading the kernel. This is not, uh, this is not mandatory, but you, it's nice to load the kernel if you want to spawn it more than one time. And here is how we spawn a kernel. We pass the kernel, also we configure uh, the, the grid. And here we pass the arguments for the kernel. And after computing with the kernel, we can get the results back using get G matrix. So this is the basic language that we are now expanding it using with hoc. So it, stands, it extends this language, G-Potion language, with, with higher order kernels. Uh, we also uh, allow uh, programmers to define uh, device functions, and the device functions and kernels uh, can, take, can take functions as arguments. Uh, and also another thing that we can do is to reference uh, device functions in CPU code, so then we can pass them to kernels before executing them. Also, we have uh, we allow programmers to define uh, device anonymous functions that can be used to configure kernels. Uh, so this is an example of a, a, a kernel written in hoc. Uh, the main thing here is that now kernels can receive functions as arguments. This is basically an implementation of a map. 
So uh, it, it takes a, a, an input array, a result array, the size of the arrays and a function to be applied in all the elements of the input array. Here is also uh, an example of the definition of a device function that is defined using FH. And here is how to, to launch a hawk kernel. So you use uh, spawn and we pass the kernel, we configure the, 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 the grid and we can pass uh, device functions to the kernel so it can be executed. Uh, also, we can have the same behavior of this, the previous uh, program using an, an anonymous function that is defined using the hawk primitive. So we pass the anonymous function to the hawk primitive and then we can use it to configure a kernel. So we can write high level abstractions using Hawk. So one obvious thing that you can do is to implement algorithmic skeletons, which are higher order functions that encapsulate common patterns of uh, parallel programming. So we have implemented GPU versions of functions like map and reduce. And usually the approach to do that is to uh, implement a kernel that has the desired behavior and then we implement the, 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 the skeleton in pure elixir that will spawn this kernel. So in the paper, I, I have some examples of, of, of how to implement uh, skeletons. Here I have only one example that uses two, two skeletons to implement a, a dot pro product. One interesting thing is that if the skeletons take as argument, uh, receive uh, G, G matrixes as arguments and return G matrixes as arguments, we can compose skeletons or GPU computations using the pipe operation of Elixir. So. Also, another example that I have in the paper is the implementation of basic array comprehensions that are uh, based on the least comprehensions of Elixir. So here I have one example, uh, which is the GPU form that can, uh, the, takes the elements of a, 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 a matrix and then uh, computes the, the square of these elements. So this is implemented using metaprogramming. I have the, the, the code for it in the paper. So a little bit about the implementation of this language. Uh, the, G, G, uh, the, the matrix is represented internally as an ar array of floats. It, 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 uh, the, the matrix abstraction is uh, numerical arrays, but internally in Elixir they are represented as arrays of, of floats. So then we can use CUDA malloc and CUDA co uh, memory copy to, to implement the new G, new G matrix primitive and get G matrix in, is implemented with CUDA memory copy. And uh, the G matrix is registered as a new resource in the Erlang VM. So we can use uh, destructor, destructors implemented using CUDA free to, to, to implement garbage collection. Uh, automatically of these arrays. Uh, kernels are implemented using metaprogramming. So uh, uh, metaprogramming in Elixir is implemented through map macros, which are special functions that can modify Elixir's uh, abstract syntax tree. So uh, we have uh, the, the macros that we have implemented are the, the the one to define new modules and the one to implement anonymous functions. So these macros take the AST of the code and pass it to the Hawk compiler. So the AST goes to, through type inference and type checking. Uh, we also, I, I didn't present here, but we also have a typed version of, of, of Hawk. So we do type inference for uh, kernels that have no type. We do type inference for kernels that uh, don't have types declared. And we use type checking for kernels that have type. And also, 
after passing through type inference and type checking, it goes to uh, a, a CUDA backend that generates generates CUDA code that is compiled with MVCC. And to access these uh, codes in, in, in an Elixir, we use NIFS, which is uh, uh, a way of accessing C code in, in, in Elixir. So here I have some, some experiments to, to give some insight. Basically, it's to show that these things work. We have implemented five, five programs in Hawk and Elixir. Uh, and the experiments use these, these, these things. And the first one is a micro benchmark, is a sum uh, to sum two arrays. So it is implemented using list comprehensions in Elixir and array comprehensions in Hawk. So we can see that this PDAP is very small for a small size uh, input. But as we increase the input, we increase also the speed up in hot compared to Elixir. So, so the other example that we have is matrix multiplication that is implemented also using array comprehensions in hot in Elixir. It uses the dot product of the matrix library. So here we could ha have uh, a, a much higher speed up in comparison to Elixir. Uh, another example is the dot product that I presented before that is, is implemented as a composition of net and reduce. Uh, also, uh, for is small inputs, the speed up is not so high, but then if we increase uh, the input, we have more speed up. Uh, we also implemented Julia. Julia, uh, was implemented using in, in Hawk and in Elixir using a map. And uh, it has an interactive equation which is very expensive in the Elixir side, so we have huge speed ups here in comparison to, 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 to pure Elixir. So what I have presented is Hawk, which is an extension for GPU programming elixir, the main abstraction are higher order kernels, which are kernels that they can take functions as arguments. So programmers can reference device functions in host code and then uh, pass these functions to kernels. Uh, we also allow uh, anonymous functions uh, uh, to, to device anonymous functions. And I, I, uh, I did show that we can, using these, these things, we can implement high-level abstractions like algorithmic skeletons and high comprehensions. So in future work, we want to, to provide compatibility with the NX library, so then we can have also different types of arrays in, in, in the language and also implement other skeletons and abstractions. For the language. So, thank you. That's it. Thank you for that very nice presentation. So, questions? One question here, please. Why did you compare your high level approach using Hot with um, using CUDA directly? Uh, why I didn't compare? Yes. I think it's very difficult. No, no, basically because uh, when we compile hot, we generate uh, CUDA, so we, we could, yeah, we could uh, compare it. You mean to understand the overhead that we are imposing by using hot in yeah. comparison to CUDA? Well, I, I agree with you that that would be an interesting thing to, to do, yeah, but we, we haven't. <laughs> I, I suppose the code is very complex in CUDA. Uh, in CUDA, no. Complex, you mean these examples? Yes. Uh, to program uh, directly CUDA using Elixir. Well, the, the, the only difference is that you cannot, in CUDA, you cannot pass functions as arguments to kernels. I mean, you can do that, but you have to define a global pointer. In, in, in the GPU, 
and then copy this address to the CPU, and then and this is what we do behind the scenes, right here. But then in CUDA, you, you, you have to do that explicitly. But I think it wouldn't be too difficult to do that, uh, to do that comparison here. We just didn't have time. What we wanted to do is to show basically that this works, right? Yes. We have one, one more question. Yes. Uh, congratulations. Uh, I have two small questions. One, is the NX team aware of your work? The in a, NX team. No, I don't, don't think so. And do you think that, uh, well, well, yes, let me open this question. What's your goal? Your goal is that Elixir developers use Hawk or that people that want to create, a, a, I really don't understand this, what's a GPU kernel exactly, but people that want to do that and, and they want to have an option that is doing that with Elixir? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, so it's mostly the second option, not the, the first one to, to be attractive to Elixir developers. No, uh, well, I think what, what we, we have, have here is, is an interesting abstraction that could maybe attract people to, to Elixir, but also uh, if an Elixir programmer wants to use uh, the GPU, uh, we want to provide this, this option. Yes, because I, I, I talked to uh, an NX team member, oh, okay. yeah, in Paulo Valente, and he told me that the, the NX project's goal was both, like, okay, someone that is from the Elixir community wants to do something with machine learning, they have the NX option. And also people from other ecosystems that want to do machine learning, now they have the the NX option, which is uh, yeah, which has right. all the the Bing, uh, the Bing ma virtual machine, the, all the, the features of the Bing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think we we go in the same direction, right? And also, we we, we have all the, the code available, all the examples uh, in this GitHub repository. I forgot to mention. Okay, thanks. I have a student that is implementing a neural network in, in Hawk. So I think it's possible because the main problem with what we have here is that we only support arrays of flows. But basically this is good for, for, for implementing a, a neural network. So we are currently implementing this example in Hawk.